This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. This program is supported by BMEG Premium at Pratak Plus Gold. Sama-sama salaman, walang iwanan. Greetings from the Philippines to the world. We are on Facebook Live on Eagle News and Net25 TV and also on our streaming site, eaglenewslive.com. Watch us on our YouTube channel at Net25 TV. I am Cesar Vallejos. Welcome to Open for Business. Join me, discover the latest news and information in business around the world. Stay ahead of the curve from vision to action. Fashion is passion. Not even coronavirus can stop people from wanting what to wear and when to wear them, even during lockdowns. With the rolling out of vaccinations all over the world, we see hope in the fashion industry. This week, we are privileged to have a conversation with one of the fashion industry's most recognizable international designer brands. The CEO and Chief Creative Officer of the House of Natori will give her outlook on the fashion business and share tips to MSMEs on creativity, marketing, and innovation from her living room in New York. Ms. Josie Natori will join us in this episode of Open for Business. Sa panahon na lagana pang mga sakit, katuwang nyo ang BMEG Premium at Protect Plus Gold. Gawa sa state-of-the-art facilities ang BMEG Premium Feeds. Kaya ito ay safe, sanitized, and hygienic. Walang dalang sakit, certified, malinis, sariwa, at sigurado. At para laging malinis ang paligid, gumamit ng Protect Plus Gold. Isang safe broad spectrum disinfectant na pumapatay ng mga virus, bacteria, at fungi. BMEG Premium at Protect Plus Gold. Sama-sama sa laban, walang iwanan. Salamat, salamat musika Lahat ng panahon Maaasahan ka Salamat, salamat musika Itong munting mundo Ay namapasigla Salamat musika Open for Business is back and with me is uh, the CEO and Chief Creative Officer of the House of Natori, Ms. Josie Natori. How are you, Ms. Josie? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Well, after, after uh, an incredible year, you know, it's great to be here healthy and alive, right? So that's the best gift of all. Yes, that's great. I agree with you there. And uh, what time is it in that part of the world? I understand that you are, uh, from, uh, uh, this interview is done and you're there in the United States. Yeah, well, I'm talking to you from New York. It's 8 a.m. It's um, normal time for me. I'm, you know, normally in the office by nine. So it's not, it's not so bad. We're just a 12 hour difference. Ah, that's perfect. Um, Ms. Natori, we're actually doing uh, and we're running this interview because we honor um, women in entrepreneurship. And uh, um, the, your brand, um, the name itself, um, Josie Natori, is considered um, a fashion icon, not only in the Philippines, but in different parts of the world. And you are um, recognized as a uh, one of the women who made it in the 
international um, fashion industry. How is it, Ms. Natori, that um, you are considered, how do you feel that you are considered as one of the icons in the fashion industry, especially when um, uh, Filipinas are um, talked about, when um, women achievers, Filipina achievers are mentioned in the industry? Well, thank you. Well, first, thank you for having me in your show. Um, well, I honestly, um, I would not be in this place today if I did not have the heritage of being from the Philippines and being a Filipino woman. Um, I consider myself very fortunate. I said, oh, I've said so, for so many years that my biggest asset first is being a woman and second is being Filipino, Filipino American or you know, an Asian. I think that heritage and that genes um, really was uh, uh, very instrumental in getting me to where um, we are today. You know, um, I come from a very entrepreneurial family, come from a family of very strong women. My grandmother, who was an entrepreneur, my mother, who was an entrepreneur and helped my father build the business. So I really had a great examples, role models that um, propelled me and really encouraged me to be whatever I wanted to be. Um, mm -hmm. It's been 45 years since almost 45 years by next year that we have uh, built the, comp the Notori company. And it's, you know, it is being a, a gift. It's a very, very tough business, let me tell you. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we, we uh, started, you know, we're in the right place at the right time. Uh, and very fortunate that after all, over four decades that we are still on top of our game and a privately held company and really, um, you know, the a leading designer brand in the different categories um, to this day worldwide. So, but I really attribute that so much to my heritage and I feel very fortunate being Filipino. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's perfect. And that's it's great to hear, Ms. Natori. Now, you mentioned one um, key word, uh, which is uh, hard. Uh, we know that um, the um, coronavirus, uh, the pandemic, um, has um, uh, really, you know, been um, some sort of uh, game changer. It, uh, you know, stopped a lot of things. It disrupted a lot of things. And uh, there was one report, um, if uh, I may read this, uh, Ms. Natori, with the uh, retail shops shattered by lockdowns and precipitous declines, even in online sales, as consumer spending switch to necessities, the average market capitalization of apparel, fashion, and luxury brands dropped almost 40% in the year to the end of March, according to McKinsey, which expects a large number, number of global fashion companies to go bankrupt in the next 12 to 18 months. My question there, Ms. Natori, is that, um, what is your outlook of the fashion industry? I know that um, you have uh, built the company, you know, um, from the ground up. And, uh, but this uh, um, pandemic is really changing everything. What's the outlook so far? And how do you think um, the other um, fashion brands or the fashion industry will survive this crisis? Well, it's a, it's not going to be a very uh, short answer. Um, I I think that um, I uh, feel incredibly blessed that when um, I started, you know, forty three years ago, almost forty four years ago, I started in an, a a category that um, was a niche. You know, I started as you know in the lingerie. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, the closest thing to a woman, it's a body, and they are really feel good, feel good kind of clothing. And this concept of Notori started really on clothing that, you know, enhances a woman's life, makes you feel better. You don't really need it. You just want it, but it's comfortable. It makes you 
feel glamorous and it has an east-west sensibility. And it just happened to be that I was in the category of sleeper lounger. That's how we began. I mean, today we are in every category from jewelry to footwear to, to ready to wear to home. But the, 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 the core of the Notori um, brand is about clothing that, that you know, a, a woman can feel 24-7 and, and, and be comfortable. And it's, it's, a, it, it, it's easy. It's, it's um, versatile clothing. And so during this pandemic, you know, like, yes, nobody needed party dresses, office dresses, ball <laughs> gowns, uniforms. Yes. But they were at home, so they were like luxuriating in pajamas, caftan, you know, sleepwear, and you know, doing their Zoom meetings and that. So, um, for and feeling good about it, you know. Um, and I think that you know we really um, resonated so much during this time, even more so with all the consumers who were stuck at home, right? What am I going to wear? But I still can't be sloppy. So you know, hence sleeper lounge. I mean, I always believe we make clothes that wear wherever you want. Some people happen to like to sleep in them, right? But it's not just for that. But it, so it was very um, appropriate and, more, and, and really resonated so much. And so we actually, yes, it was panic, panic time exactly a year ago. I, you know, it is a year ago where uh, you, we didn't know what the heck was going on. Stores had closed, canceled their orders. Um, and God knows, you know, stay at home. And it, it was a very frightening time, I have to tell you, um, in the four decades, because you were dealing with an enemy that was invisible. You know, I thought that if I went out of my apartment here, I'm a Upper East Side and sniff the air, I'd die, you know, because that's what they kept saying about the virus. So you didn't know what the future would be, but, you know, we all had to pivot and we all had to make adjustments um, as the offices were closed, um, had to furlough employees, and you just had to do what you needed to do. You had no idea what the future would be. Um, you know, 12 months later, um, you know, fortunately with a, my son, who Kenneth, who is the president of the company, we and we just mobilized everybody and we just did did what every other company had to do you had to reboot you had to re-strategize you had to trench you had to you know everything just you, you know you had to figure figure it all out and mm -hmm. um you know fortunately um you know uh, yes a lot of companies um would not survive stores who went bankrupt or you know they had uh we had um, a major customer who had to file chapter 11. So you had unpaid bills. I mean, so everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, but you know, uh, the fortunate thing is um, we started our own online business. Uh, Kent, my son started it in um, about 2007. So it's been 14 years. And I, you know, we, we, we put all our energies in there. And by the end of the year of 2020, you know, it grew 100% from the year before. So it really was a, you know, I mean, a savior. It yeah. wasn't enough for what you would lose from the stores that canceled their orders, but it certainly was a huge help. And also, even with the stores that, um, that had canceled by the time they, you know, they came back to some of them to... Um, shipping for the holiday, our kind of clothing did so well during the holidays, you know, mm -hmm. so made up some of the losses, but obviously it was still down, but our online business compensated in a very big way, certainly in the bottom line. So we actually finished better bottom line than the year before. But, you know, there was also help from the government here. Fortunately, they had the PPP and plus we had to reduce our rents and just did everything you did to do to, uh, be smart in um, reducing your overhead. So I would say that, um, you know, every other company in the, around the world in fashion had to scramble. As I said, we are fortunate that we were in a category that did well um, uh, during that time and resonated. But, you know, I think we're, we're not everyone is out of the woods yet. There's still a little bit of um uncertainty for the rest of the year. So I consider 2021 still a transition year, um, but everyone has definitely um, 
adjusted their 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 platform, their overhead structure. The way of doing business is very different. It definitely, I would say, the pandemic is a game changer. How do I feel today? You know, um, 13 months after the pandemic, I would say that, you know, we look. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that we have a core business that that resonated so well in a way I feel like that we are um, you know the best things is really not still to come here as we um, you know have rebooted for the next chapter of Notori um, I, I actually have been um, really you know pleasantly um, uh, surprised and we said that there's so much interest in our brand we actually are uh, launching quite a number of new categories um, this fall, including men's loungewear, <laughs> our first entry into 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 men. Uh, so soon we can dress you. This is very exciting. We just launched it this week in footwear. You know, um, in fine jewelry. We actually are even doing clothes for the dogs. <laughs> so so quite a bit. So I, I I'm very, very um, actually exhilarated. Um, I think there's new energy and you, you kind of have to adjust, you know, and we, less is more. We have less people in the company, but very productive, um, more productive, um, have adjusting to some work from home, some, you know, going to the office. So it's not business as normal, but everyone has kind of risen to the occasion and we're incredibly grateful to our team for mobilizing and doing what it takes to kind of survive. And I think in a, in a very, um, you know, uh, fortunate way, we feel stronger than ever. Um, and, and to be, to be competing because it's, it's definitely not business as usual. It's a, the new, there's, there's a new norm, you know, and stores had to adjust still to the customers buying more online and, so we are putting a lot of focus on building our direct-to-consumer mm -hmm. um, that still keeps growing in the last uh, three months of March. Um, we're double of the year before, but, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it's so it, it's just really um, very fast. All the changes are very fast, but I'm, you know, I'm incredibly still excited. I mean, thank God, because if I wasn't excited about the business, I'd be out of it. Because it's, <laughs> yeah. it is, it's, it's a big challenge. Consumer is king and she's changing her mind. You have to really be on top of her as to what she wants, what she doesn't want. And she wants it everything yesterday, you know, at her doorstep, you know, yeah. at all the yeah, prices she wants. Of, yeah, speaking of consumers, um, Ms. Atori, um, I think you, you mentioned about, you know, how um, the Notri brand resonates with women. And I agree with you during this time of pandemic. All the while, I thought, um, you know, people will just, you know, when they stay um, uh, in their homes, in the privacy of their homes, you know, they are not necessarily concerned with uh, how they look, but uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, people that I interview here, CEOs and thought leaders um, like you, you know, people would still want to look good, look beautiful. They want to, as you mentioned with your lingerie, they want to, you know, still um, feel good with their clothing. You know, they still want to um, look pretty and beautiful. And uh, the good thing is I never uh, also realized that um, beauty and fashion could be essential as far as the consumer is concerned. My question there, Ms. Natori, is that um, how do you keep on um, knowing what your consumers want? Is there some sort of a, a market research that you do? Is, the, is, is there a constant communication uh, between your team and um, the consumers who order your brands? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. I, 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 as I said to you earlier, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about women and we wouldn't be here today if I wasn't in, or not just me, but everyone in tune to who is that consumer. I'm one of them and many others and friends that, you know, I, 
you, you just have to understand who your consumer is and what she's wanting and that what she wanted when I started for four years ago is different today. You know, um, you have to evolve with them. And, and that, that goes with going to the stores and talking to the salespeople, learning from the buyers. It's, it's having that curiosity uh, mm -hmm. always. And, um, you know, the consumer is much more um, uh, vocal today. She will vote what, when she wants something, she doesn't want something. And uh, I, I think it's a very, very different landscape today. Um, uh, how do we evolve? I mean, we have a point of view that um, has been constant, you know, all these decades. And obviously the East-West sensibility, my heritage is very evident when you see a notary from far away, our prints, our, our shapes, our embellishments, all of that is something that is recognized and you know, a notary print from far away. And, you know, I, I think the brand um, has evoked that, you know, it, it, there's, there's a sense that when you were a notary, it's, it's special, it's for you, you feel good and it's, it's distinctive. And, um, you know, I, I think that you have to always give a reason for a woman to want something, because can you imagine, you know, mm -hmm. Especially in the Philippines, you know, every week, you know, every month they, they go to restaurants and they want to see something different. So we have new products all the time, every month. So you have to titillate the customer each time, okay. right? So we spend, we spend a lot of time uh, on the design. I mean, we're a design-driven company. You do not ever take for granted and just say, you know, yes, there are basic things, but new colors, you know, but all, always like give them something new. Because nobody needs any of these things. You just have to want them, <laughs> right? And yeah, I think, you know, I believe women work very hard. This, this is my philosophy. They work hard. They deserve it, right? They don't need anybody to buy it from them. You buy it themselves. Because I feel good. I buy it. I wear it. It makes me feel good. And I, and I believe in looking good 24-7, even when you're sleeping, <laughs> you know? Um. That was um, something very refreshing, Ms. Natori, because uh, with all your responses now, uh, I can sense that there is hope. A lot, of, a lot of people in the fashion industry, because of the lockdowns, you know, because of the, um, you know, um, um, uh, the supply chains were also affected. But it's refreshing that you are here with your passion and with all the, the many innovations that you are doing now. There is a sense of... Uh, hope and that sense of innovation, you know, that will compel um, businesses, uh, um, SMEs to continue what they do. So my question, um, Ms. Natori, is this, because you also all mentioned about, um, you know, um, pivoting. And uh, what struck me was um, even before the pandemic, and as you said, your, your son Kenneth had also a take on this, that you started with the uh, online with with digital um uh, with with the digital transformation and i think that is what was lacking to some of the businesses um you know people relied on the um uh, brick and uh, mortar you know stores the physical yes. stores but somehow you know they missed uh, the key point where they had to really go towards digital, uh, virtual, and online to uh, address to the maybe the younger market. But with COVID-19, everybody were forced to uh, go online. We never realized before that, you know, I, I would never imagine um, doing this interview with the uh, Josie Natori from New York. But here we are now, you know, um, talking with you. And this is our all brought about by COVID-19. So was this, uh, Ms. Natori, one of your um, um, long-term strategies um, to, you know, for, for some businesses, because a lot of uh, uh, viewers of Open for Business uh, are also entrepreneurs who are thinking of uh, ways on how they can bounce back. Ito po ba ay, you know, is this really part of your strategy um, for business growth? Uh, integrating online or digital strategy, embracing digital transformation? Yeah. Well, you know, we uh, wouldn't be here today if 
we did not have the support of department stores from day one. So for so many decades, clearly uh, we were, um, our business was driven by business with the department stores. It is still today a big percentage. Um, uh, I am feel incredibly fortunate that we started this um, direct business um, 13 years ago. And, you know, in, a, in many ways, I mean, you know, my son joined, um, you know, he came from Wall Street and, you know, he joined the business and his mindset said, we have to get into this thing. Um, I obviously, it was a godsend. I always wanted to go direct to consumer with having retail, our own stores. You know, we had our first store in Paris and then I had a store actually in Manila and, you know, I had a tried a store in New York. I can't say we have been incredibly uh, successful with our own retail because it takes a different mentality. But it, a lot of it was kind of like testing the market, right? And I still believe that that in time there's a combination of some retail, but and on. But primarily, I would say the future is the digital, because even the department stores, the growth is in the digital part of their business. So whether I'm dealing with Neiman Marcus or Bloomingdale's or Saks or, you know, Nordstrom, their dot-com business is slowly, they're pivoting it to become 50% of their business compared to the bricks and mortar. So the brick and mortar stores are, are you know, just part of the whole story. It's an omni-channel kind of a business that mm -hmm. one has to develop because the consumers today, particularly the consumers of tomorrow, they don't have the time nor want to be going to the stores as much. And it's the convenience, the convenience of having it in your home and trying it on, you know, easy delivery, easy return. It seems to be the norm and w will be. And um, so, I, you know, I guess fortunately we started in it early and we controlled it ourselves. And, you know, it's for the bottom line, it's so much better. It is expensive. It is not an easy um, uh, undertaking, but you know, I think you know the, the, the we, we we have had some kind of foundation here, and everything here is just trying to figure out how to grow and acquire more new customers. So, I think that today, um, one cannot survive. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you want to have growth without thinking about the digital business, uh, it's a global business. I mean. I, you know, where you, it's, uh, it astounds me how you can ship. I mean, we offer free shipping around the world. I can't say, how's that possible, you know? But it does, you know. So it's, it's a different world today. And I, in a way, it's exciting because I can reach globally the world without having to put up a store in Australia, in China, the this, the that, right? And, um, you know, yes, you have to pay the dues and all of that, but it sure saves from having to set up offices in the different countries. So... It, it, you know, I, I think the, the, the internet has been a game changer for the, every business. And I think today the, the pandemic, it was already going there before the pandemic, right? But this That's actually great. is hastening it, hastening it. So it's not about building more stores. It's like, okay, what's the right balance? Actually, stores are reducing the number of stores and putting resources into the into the uh, um, digital business. So yeah, it, 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 it is necessary. And, but in many ways, you know what? Um, you talk about entrepreneurs or, or, or opportunities. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's easy, but in a way the digital world allows entrepreneurs like Okay, get in there, go to the Instagram, you can start selling your products, you can test like that before you do a website. So you're able to expose or, or test the market today that without having to set up a, a brick and mortar stores, which is expensive. So in many ways, I think it opens the field a lot more once you figure it all out, you know, and I know a lot of Filipinos who are there, designers who... <laughs> kind of have their business a little bit, you know, it might seem like mom and pop, but it's great. It's great. It said, you have an idea, test it, nah. you know, put in your Instagram and just see. And, you know, I know people there who buy, you know, are able to sell a little bit. So, you know, I, and it's, it's incredibly um, exciting to me. Uh, 
it, it seems can be intimidating, but I, I think it's opening up the whole, you know, it's the world is becoming smaller with having this digital um, technology. Um, Miss Natori, you sound like um, you are a 30 year old technopreneur. So <laughs> what, is, what is your um, source of uh, innovation how do you uh, do this because um, you also mentioned you know what is very important which is the omni-channel approach especially when you grow your business how do you um, um, get what are your sources of uh, innovation is this is this about having a um, um, young team having um, uh, millennials in the group or having this um, um, uh, good um, communication and uh, uh, dealing with, uh, um, you know, being hands-on with uh, um, uh, uh, giving the uh, needs and the wants of your customers. Where yeah. do you find very uh, young technopreneur mindset, Ms. Natori? Yeah. Well, I, I th thank you. I, you know what? I actually, for many years, was very, felt very intimidated by this thing because it's like, oh, God, you know. Um, I didn't really understand the language. I knew it as a concept, as a businesswoman. Obviously, I, I saw it because we, you know, from day one, it was like, wow, you know. I mean, how can you, you know, when, 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 when Kenneth started this um, 13 years ago, I was incredibly, you know, excited that my goodness you know because uh, and he would he used to be doing all the shipping himself from our warehouse we we decided not to have a third party and he learned the business from the ground you know so in many ways i was i kind of learned through him but obviously i'm very focused on the design i'm very focused on the creative part but i also love the whole thing of sales but you know cannot to really give him all the credit for building this and you know, so obviously it's hiring the right people who are in that field. Um, I wasn't so as involved in the day-to-day -day of the business until the pandemic hit. Because when everything was closed, I said, okay, you know, I mean, I figured, let me get it. Because it was the only thing that was going because the stores were closed, right? We we're not shipping a thing, the warehouse. And, and it really forced me to, to learn and it's been so much fun for me to learn a new language. And then today, and I, you know, we, we do our email blast. I mean, with the home base, learning all of the metrics, learning all these terminologies. But at the end of the day, it's pretty, you know, logical. It's just words that are used. You know, I would just intimidate me. But it's nothing more than setting up your store but it's just in the digital world. So it's no difference. So, you know, I, I think about that. Well, you know, so how do I get customers into the, the website, right? So you have to have the right products, the right imagery, the right email blast. So, and then better have the right service. Um, so it, to me, it's common sense in a way once you figure it out, right? Um, it's just words that they use. And obviously the marketing is not, advertising in the newspaper or in the magazine, but it's digital and finding ways for, you know, search web engines and whether it's Google or whether it's the, you know, the, the Facebook and all of that where you buy the, you know, for them to get on the top of the page, you know. So to me, it's been wonderful learning. We have very young people. I mean, the tour is filled with a lot of millennials. Um, I mean, they're the ones who embrace this totally and that's how, how they buy. So you know, it allowed me to really get into it and observe it day by day. I, I am, you know, every day I see the sales. I, I, I know the sales. I see it. I look at my, my iPhone every 10 minutes. I'm, I'm obsessive about it. I, you know, every day I have the goal and I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I was in Wall Street, so I love sales. I mean, <laughs> my son obviously drives the whole thing in terms of the operations and the big concepts and dealing with a, making sure we have the right uh, platforms, you know, and the right um, marketing vehicles with uh, our di marketing digital manager. But I'm very focused on the marketing of the products and making sure it's out there and what we are posting and our, uh, you know, just the way we look, you know. And so it, it's, been, it's been a great run. And, you know, I'm 
what can I say? You know, I, 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 I don't profess to know a lot of things and I many times will stop. I said, will you please explain this to me? Because sometimes they really talk in words and a lot of symbolisms that sometimes like it's way above my head. But, you know, I said, stop. Explain this to me. What does it mean? But the end is pretty logic. It's just, you know, it's just a language thing, but it's really nothing but another way of selling. You know, it's just digital. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, you, you you make it very simple, Miss Natori. But I think um, you know, my follow up question there is that, um, uh, based on my um, um, you know, um, short readings about you, it's really your um design that has it, and they call it the East meets West uh, aesthetic, and um, um is uh, in, in terms of um the critical factors that. MSME, small businesses or entrepreneurs um, should focus on. Uh, is it the design process? Is it the creative, um, the creative process? Is what aspect of your business has to really stand out? Because it was also um, interesting that you mentioned about you catering to a niche market. Um, you, you were first or you were able to really arrest um, a special category in the fashion business. So in, when you identify um, a specific aspect of your business that has to um, have it, and in your case, it's, your, it's the notory design and the East uh, meets West aesthetic, what would that be? Because of course, now when we, uh, as you mentioned earlier, marketing takes a different dimension through digital. But sabi nga nila, kung wala naman yung design mo, wala yung creativity mo, even if, you know, people will talk about it, you know, even if they have that great marketing, but the product um, sucks. I'm um, sorry for the word. It would still not work. So, what are your tips uh, to entrepreneurs on what specific aspects of their business or operations that they should focus on? Yeah, really a very good question. I have always believed that um, you know you have to have a reason for being. The, to me, product is king. There has to be a point of differentiation. My point of differentiation from the very beginning was that East meets West and the heritage I have and the distinction of, the, of, of our product because you can see it from our color sensibility, our prints, and the artisanship, the embroideries. So from th that really has been very helpful in terms of distinction because you could, there's so much stuff in the stores, right? So uh, you have to stand out. And I'm grateful that I've been able to have that. I have an archive of over 50 years from all my travels and all our, our and so much of our design is inspired by that, you know, and it's definitely the East to West is something we flaunt, we don't hide, it's something I'm very proud of. But on top of that, I think we have developed, when you say notory, there is a psychographic, niche where women who have been wearing notori buying the years know that when it has given them pleasure it has given them feel good it's from the inside out whether it's our underwear to the you know to even when we had fragrance it's, it's from the inside to the outside their home that that it's you know because it's part of what our our mantra is 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 as putting is is um what do you call this thing is um, putting art into life. You know, like we, we, all these collections that I have, being able to put them into designs that you can wear and live with. And, and it gives satisfaction to the consumer. So there is a sense that you buy a Tory, it's a feel good. You know, the brand connotes that, that's part of the niche. It's not just the look, but you know that guaranteed, you know what, it's a great gift. You know, when you buy Notori, people were going to say, oh, I'm special. I got that. So fortunately, but that didn't come overnight that you had to prove that, right? A brand does not happen until a customer tells you, I like your brand. That doesn't happen in two days, right? It, it's just, and, and just because you were great the first year doesn't mean you're going to be great in the fifth year. So you have to keep going at it. Um, and I will say to people, look, 
it is, as I said in the beginning, an incredibly tough business. I had no idea what I got into when I did. Um, it was far easier when I started. But you know what? It's too late to change now. And fortunately, I still love it. <laughs> and I am, um, you know, I'm an artist at heart. You know, I'm a pianist. Behind me are my two grand pianos here, you can see. And, um, you know, it's like creating music. You're never, I always say, you never play the same note twice, ever, <laughs> the same way. You're always trying to create a new sound. And, you know, that's the artistry of us as Filipinos. I mean, I, I believe in the you know, the creativity of, of our heritage, of our Filipinos. And I thank God, you know, I, I have that. And I think we're always like looking for the next thing, the next note, keep evolving. That's, and that's yeah. what Natura is about. It's not, you can never be static. You can't ever mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm great. I'm successful. I mean, even though that we've survived the pandemic, you can't sit still. There is so much competition out there. And, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's after your tail all the time. But you mm -hmm. have to always be better. You always have to be there and just listening to the, the consumer has so many choices. She doesn't mm -hmm. need any of us, right? So it's whoever is going to get there fast with the right product, with the right imagery and compelling message. And today it's not even enough just to have the product. They want, the consumer wants to know that you are sourced properly, the ethical, you know, standards, the sustainability things. And that you're not, you know, in a sweatshop, that you're doing good. Well, I'm very proud that we have been giving jobs to many women. And we have a lot of mostly women in our factories, but, you know, in the Philippines and giving jobs. And I'm incredibly proud of that. And, and so to me, um, you know, and we obviously have the highest standards in terms of our employment thing. And, and you know, um, so... To me, to be creating a product that's not just about, you know, quality, design, but, you know, it's helping other people, employing, employing and giving jobs. But so all of that, you know, gives, you know, the authenticity. of the. Mm -hmm. I, I think today there's so much demand on a product has to be many things for before the consumer votes to buy it, you know. And mm -hmm. it's not just about the price is one thing, too. So, and mm -hmm. fortunately, you know, we have several brands, you know, we have mm -hmm. Josie Notori, we have Notori, we have Ed Notori, we have Josie. So we're hitting, we're approaching her on different angles at different price points. And, uh, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's, you know, it, it's a um, bit, 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 bit busy time. And I think that um, this post pandemic is going to open up mm -hmm. a whole different way of retail. I really believe, I, and I think it's still unfolding. It's still unfolding. Um, and, you know, the ones who have, um, who, who can pivot, who can really uh, change, um, you know, will succeed. I think the opportunities are there. It's just going to be, it's not, there's no going back. <laughs> there's no going back. It's just yeah. figuring out a, what. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a couple of questions, uh, Ms. Natori, yeah. before we wrap up. Uh, it was really an exciting interview. Um, aside from COVID-19, Ms. Natori, there's another um, um, pressing issue, you know, that's been um, hounding um, the business oh. and the growing uh, um, Asian hate. So what, uh, and um, uh, with, with this interview, you were talking about heritage, um, pride of place, and uh, you know, um, it's really your, which is the source of your inspiration. Yes. But here is an issue that somehow um, mm -hmm. impacts not only uh, on us Filipinos, but uh, people here yeah. in Asia. What's your take on yeah. this uh, growing Asian hate, Ms. Antonio? Yeah. Well, it is incredibly um, um, disturbing. Uh, we went out, I mean, um, over a month ago, that we uh, have joined organizations and contributing to organizations that are fighting this. I went out and uh, did a video you'll see in my Instagram about the message that, you know, um, just stating or, you know, really um, that it's about, you know, really we got to, you know, hatred has no, has no place anywhere, you know, um, and, 
and to me, um, you know, uh, being, um, uh, what is that word? You know, be, you know, being uh, racist, it, 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 it's not acceptable, no matter what, whether it's Asian, black, doesn't matter, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I think we definitely have made a statement against this and contributing to organizations continually to help on this. I. Of course, I'm the eternal optimist. I hope that this will pass. We had the, you know, we have the Black Lives Matter here. We had the Me Too. I mean, it's just, I think because of this pandemic, you have a lot of people who are like, I, I don't know, there's a lot of um, craziness going around. Um, it's certainly here in New York um, has been frightening. I mean, certainly that Filipino woman too in Atlanta, where was that in, um, in, in 42nd Street that was, um, that was hurt on the street and so by standards they're not doing a blessed thing it's so unacceptable so um let's look at i'm so proud of my asian thing i flaunted and then something i'm uh and we will be there to be fighting this and, and making statements and helping whatsoever um we can't we can't um you know we we, we can't we can't stop um uh, fighting against this and um hopefully that it will, it will just pass. I think it's just, I think the pandemic has just um, uh, been detrimental for a lot of, you know, mental, you know, just people with mental issues, depression that has both this, the amount of homelessness, joblessness has, I think, caused a lot of this stuff, you know, whether it's envy or hatred, whatever it is, then there's a politics here too, but hopefully that will all come to pass. So, but um, it, it is very upsetting and disturbing. And we're, as a company, we'll always be supporting this. And we have been supporting a lot of um, other issues, um, um, you know, through the, through the years. Um, but this one is particularly too close to home right here in New York City. <laughs> yeah. And for my final question, Mr. Tori, um, there are a lot of um, small businesses, entrepreneurs who also um, dream um, of uh, making it in the international market. And what are your tips? What's your message to entrepreneurs also who would want to make it in the international market? And what is your uh, message to the small businesses who also uh, would want to bounce back? And a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of them you know, would want to, uh, they still have that passion to continue with their businesses. And uh, what is that you know, source of inspiration that you can share with them so that our um, Filipino um, SMEs will also bounce back and continue to fight the, this pandemic? Yeah. Well, I, I know how incredibly tough it's in the Philippines today. I mean, I miss going there. I normally have been going there every month, um, once a month. I have a almost 97-year-old mother that I visit. So I have, it makes me so sad not to have been there since uh, January of last year. Um, and I think that the pandemic there is hit and, you know, you don't have the vaccine yet. I'm fully vaccinated and so many people in this country. And I just know that it's kind of behind in the Philippines and so many businesses hurt. And the, the, the design community there, right, that I'm in touch with, um, it's going to bounce back. Um, I think, you know, thank God. Let, let me just say that thank God for faith. <laughs> You know, and I know Filipinos are, 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 are in a way, in, in that way, you have faith. And I think with prayers, we, we're going we're gonna to get through here. I think the most important thing really is just kind of keep your, you know, your eyes open there. It's just really under, um, figuring out how to reboot your business. I, there's no, and again, you know, there's no going back. So one has to try here um, in every which way to, to, to um, change and, and, and understand, you know, look at the industry and how is the consumer, at the end is understanding, what is the consumer, uh, how is she buying your product or how is she, you know, how are you going to get her wallet or, you know, what, whatever business you have, 
there's a real change in the expectations and the way a consumer is doing her business, whether it's in banking, whether it is, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know? Um, and I think that every industry has to reboot. And so I think it's just having that agility. You have to be able to agility and, and, you know, if you have to learn it or surround yourself with people, I mean, to me, having young people in it, I mean, that to me is like, um, the most exhilarating thing is getting into the minds of the younger people. Hey, what is it that you want? I mean, I, I want our brand to be relevant to the consumers of tomorrow because I can't keep just addressing the consumers that have been with me for four decades. If that's all I did, you know, I won't have a customer. In there, you know. So you have to understand the life and their, their way of living and the, their expectations. Um, to see how can I be, how can I be catering, how can I be addressing myself to the consumer? Um, so I, I think number one, you, you, you know, you, you, you have to, you know, I mean, to me, you have to have that curiosity and learning in every which way. Um, and, you know, I, I would still not be around if we didn't have an organization that like, okay, you have to keep listening, keep listening and reading. It's, you know, and learning um, because it's, it's changing very fast, almost so fast. You know, something I thought was fine last month is no longer fine this month, you know, because somebody else came up with another idea. So can you imagine the businesses like Grab and Uber? I mean, didn't exist, Zoom, you know, God, you know, some, there's going to be another new idea like that. So why didn't I think about that? Because it takes a different kind of a mindset, the young. So I think, I know that Filipinos, the young Filipinos are really more techy. You know, I'm not. So I'd love to just, I, that's why it's always so interesting to me to listen to the younger because their, their mind works differently. Their mind works differently. And I actually have been very impressed with a number of women entrepreneurs who, you know, I was just talking to one of them recently and they, uh, in the cosmetics field and they've broken into some markets here. So there is opportunity there. You know, there is opportunity. You just have to be um, agile and just kind of look and it's different. It's different. It's not the traditional way. You know, don't think it's just selling to the high end stores, you know, that for sure direct to consumer is where it's at. So that <laughs> you have to think that that's really the future. However way you can get to the consumer the fastest way, <laughs> you know, and uh -huh. get in their face. So anyway, it's a, you know, it's a new world out there on um I mean, I don't buy anything online if you want to really know the truth. But I, I, I'd rather touch the thing. And God forbid, I'm such a compulsive shopper. If I bought online, I mean, it'd be really a disaster. But um, I get it, you know. And it's, maybe, um, because you're, maybe because you're a pianist, you want to touch the keys. Okay. Yeah, um, for... yeah. I mean, I love the feel. I mean, that's what I love about shopping. The experience is better. <laughs> But you see, yeah. now I say, okay, let me create theater with a homepage. Let me create theater with, <laughs> with, with the email blast or the, what we do with the ZMAX, with the videos. And it's really fascinating, you know, because I, I talk in my own language, but hopefully I have people here understanding it. Okay, whatever it is, you know. So <laughs> it, it, it's, um, it, it's really an interesting time, but you know what? The world is changing, the technology, you know, the idea that we're going to have electric cars and maybe they're going to be flying and the air is like beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was science fiction, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my final question, Miss Natori. If there is a Tagalog word that will describe the Natori brand, what oh my God. <laughs> I've never been asked that question. How am I going to answer that? A Tagalog word to describe Natori? Oh my God. Holy smokes. You're giving me a real challenge here. I mean, I speak Tagalog siempre, pero when I say Tagalog word, I mean, it's, it's, I, you know what? Um, oh my God. That's really hard. You know, okay. Like, okay. Uh, oh, special, uh, spe it's special. How do you say special sa Tagalog? Special. Special. Ayan. Special. Oh. Yeah. Tapos, yeah. I, 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 I,
Radio. And, um, it's, a, it's a phrase, <laughs> especial para sa Especial. <laughs> yeah. At saka sa, ma, sa, ma, sa akin is for, I always say na Tori, para sa, para sa akin kasi mahal ko, sarili ko, at para sa minamahal mo. So itong regalo, para sa iyo, at para sa minamahal mo. Pag alam wow. mo, pag ko, Tori, oh. <laughs> Wow, that is perfect. That is the best way to end this conversation. That is Miss Josie Natori, the CEO and Chief Creative Officer of the House of Natori. Open for business. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Broadcast journalist Wayne De La Fuente returns on Philippine television and radio to deliver top stories and engage with the country's policy makers, shapers, and movers. Tapalakahin ang mga pangunahing balita alas 7 ng umaga mula lunes hanggang biyernes live sa Teleradyo ng Net25 at Radyo Aguila DCEC 1062 kasama si Wayne De La Fuente sa Balit Talakayan! Samahan si na Wedge Kujama. Itong balitang panggising sa ulo ng mga balita. Apo David. Sa anim na pong katao ang isinugod sa ospital. TV Publiko. Economic sabotage ang mga tiwaling negosyante. At Cristel Fesalbon. Pagpreso ng gulay, makakausap natin. Para iatid sa inyo ang mga kaganapan at pangyayari sa bansa at sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. Mga napapanawang isyo ng bayan. May balitang sports, entertainment at iba pang kaalaman. Simula lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 5 ng umaga sa paborito niyong morning show, Pambansang Almusal, dito sa Net25. Pambansang Almusal Thank you again for watching Open for Business. Join us again in the next episodes of Open for Business for more insights from CEOs, thought leaders, industry experts, and SMEs promoting business development in the Philippines. See you again every Saturday and Sunday here in Open for Business where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. You're on Facebook Live on Eagle News and Net25 TV and you can watch this again in the video section of the Eagle News and Net25 Facebook pages and on eaglenewslive.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Net25 TV. Thank you again for watching. For Open for Business, this is Cesar Vallejos. We live in interesting times. This program is supported by BMEG Premium at Protect Plus Gold. Sama-sama sa laban, walang iwan.